Welcome to the Fitness Industry Success Show. Ideas, inspiration, and interviews to take your fitness business to the next level. Next level. With over 23 years of fitness industry experience and the founder of Lead Lion, an innovative fitness marketing agency, here's your host, Nick Parker. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Fitness Industry Success Show. I'm very excited about today's episode, which is rather unique if you've been following the show uh, for a little while now. Uh, we normally have guests who are remote and uh, today, I've got a treat for you. I've got our very own rock star marketer in house who's not afraid to be on camera or on the podcast. Kudos to your courage. Thank you. Um, Natasha, who is going to teach us how to create fitness ads that work. We're going to be talking about this in depth. Um, and just so you know, uh, she has been crushing it lately. All the accounts that she's working on are seeing really low costs uh, on CPLs, the cost per lead, uh, really great volume, high quality, uh, lots of referrals, and she's just killing it right now. And so all the gyms and, and our clients that are um, – under your belt are in good hands. Lots of wins. Yes, yeah, so many wins. And so it's amazing. So I was like, you know what? Why don't we have you on the show? Because um, you're just killing it and uh, you're a rock star around here. And um, now we all look up to you as the, Thank the you. queen of ads here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about fitness ads that work, you know, how to create mm -hmm. fitness ads that work. So, but before we do that, I'd love our audience to get to know you a little bit. Tell us maybe a couple things you're passionate about, you okay. know, what you like to do for fun. Um, I'm on a salsa dance team, actually, an all girls salsa dance team. So that's one of my passions, dancing. My second would be photography. I love taking mm -hmm. pictures. Uh, the third one, I guess, would be writing. I really enjoy writing and hanging out with my family. Really, that's Awesome. My favorite thing to do. Yeah, that's cool. And she's got a uh, competition coming up um, this, this Friday. Weekend. It's my first time performing on a stage, and I'm very excited, very nervous. <clears throat> yeah. I got this. Yeah, I know you can do it. So it'll be awesome. I don't know how they compete with photography like they do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is for dance. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to be, it'll be awesome. So I'm rooting for you guys. You guys are going to cr uh, crush it. Thank so. you. Thank you so much. All right. So let's dive in. Um, so listen, so so it all begins with um, creating ads. We're talking about Facebook ads. We're talking mm -hmm. about Instagram ads. And when for those of you, I'm going to, um, hopefully this is not too elementary for some of you, uh, but I just want to backtrack a little bit in case you're not familiar before we dive into the deeper stuff. Facebook and Instagram ads are different than Google ads because they require media, not mm -hmm. talking about Google display ads. Yes. We're talking yeah. about um, you know, Google search ads. It's all text. They require media, which is either video or slideshows images. or images, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to talk about that, but the most important thing before that is the O word. What is it? Offer. Why does What, what is the deal with the offer? I, I mean... If it's a really, really good yeah. offer, then... Regardless of the images, the copy, it's going to do well. Um, mm -hmm. The offer really depends on how well the ads are doing. We have a few offers that work really, really well. Passes work really well, like 30-day pass, 14-day pass, mm -hmm. months free. Those are always kill it. Yep. So the offer is very, very important to the ad itself. Yeah, it really is important. It all starts with the offer. I mm -hmm. mean, if you have a really weak offer, then it doesn't matter how good your yep. copywriting is or how good your images are that's, that stop the scroll, it's still going to fall short or flat or yep. not live up to its full potential. So we need to have offers that offers. are like home run, out of the park, grand yeah. slam type offers um, to begin with mm -hmm. because it's worth it. You cast a wider net and then Absolutely. you get a lot more yes. leads and then your lead cost goes down and you get a lot more membership sales. So it so, all starts with that. Offer, very important. So let's talk about ads. Um, what is the, the, maybe the two or three main purposes of the image or the video in the ad? What, what's, it, what's the number one thing it's supposed so to do? So the first one would be to stop the scroll. Stop. Stop the scroll. Stop the scroll. What is stop the scroll? What are so we talking about? So you are on Facebook. You're scrolling through your mobile device, mostly because we're all on mobile. Right. Scrolling, scrolling. And to stop the scroll, you want someone to not pass our ad and to actually stop and Oh, that's really good. Click on it. That's stopping the scroll. You said do not pass. 
do, do not, not pass do like not the pass ad. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of Monopoly. Right? Do not pass. Do not collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> Go straight to jail. <laughs> Do not pass the ad. We want them to stop and look. Oh, this is interesting. Let me see mm -hmm. what this is about. Yeah, absolutely. So the the primary is is to really create curiosity. Mm -hmm to stop the scroll, to get people to pay attention, Yes. right? I mean, if it's a boring image, then no one's going to pay attention, yeah. right? And so, and we, we've tested thousands and thousands of images. images. Yeah, what, what, in your mind, what makes a good one? Images, group images. Definitely, Groups. definitely group images. Images of people. People love watching people. Uh-oh. We got a people watcher over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a people watcher. <laughs> I don't know many people that are not. So hold on. Can we chase this rabbit for a second? What, why do people like watching people? They like watching what they're doing, what they're up to, if it's relevant to what they're doing, if they can relate. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. People people creep in public at restaurants. They'll watch people. Yeah, and they do it yeah. on, on social media yes. too, right? So. Uh, yeah, it's true. People love watching people. So I think it's that it's called Facebook. Yeah, face Facebook. Facebook. Right, exactly. So um, you know your your business pictures, your club images. Mm -hmm. Those are all important and and can work very well if they're super uh, engaging. Bright, bright colors of, yep. of the gym. That those work well too. But the ones that do the best mm -hmm. are with people. Yeah, group images of like your classes maybe of mm -hmm. people working out, those are the ones that do the Yeah, best. that trumps everything else, yes. right? Okay. So tip number one is that the main purpose of the image is to stop the... Scroll. Stop the scroll, right? Exactly. Okay. So, um, you know, there's a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words mm -hmm. and it tells a story. What kind of story are we trying to tell when we're showcasing these different images in these ads? That it's a fun gym to work out in, that it's they're going to have a good time. They're going to enjoy their workout. They're going to feel amazing and feel mm -hmm. great. Right. Um, they're going to go to a gym that's bright and clean. And those are all the things that people want to feel and see when they're looking at the gym ads. Yeah, absolutely. And then results too, right? Yes. If, if you've got some people in there that have had some great transformations. Mm -hmm. and But you have to be careful about this because Facebook doesn't allow. Before and after pictures. Right. You can't but do there's, there's ways around it. There's ways around uh, it. We've got, we've got ways around. <laughs> Shh, don't. <laughs> it's our secret. <laughs> <clears throat> Not our secret. We just don't want Facebook to know. <clears throat> Not really. Um, but yeah, they, they don't allow before and after pictures. Mm -hmm. um, it's considered like shaming and stuff like that. So you have to be very careful with ad policies. Yes. Right? Yes. So, but before and afters work really well if you frame them correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, versus, you know, just doing it. But people, yeah. fit people, people that have, um, people that are relatable too. You mm -hmm. want to have a mixture. You don't want to just have all a bunch of fit people in your ass, of right? Of course, yeah. You want people of all different fitness backgrounds, whether mm -hmm. it's the person that's just walking into the gym or someone that has been training at the gym for years. You want right. to incorporate as many different type of gym goers as you can. Yeah, especially if you're trying to reach a wider audience, course, mass yes. market. So, okay, cool. So it's important to tell the right story. Could you know? Could your images actually hurt your brand by telling the wrong story? They can. What they, would be something? So that if would... an image of the gym is dull and not very clean, someone's going to look at that and think they don't have a clean gym. Mm -hmm. um, if the images of people, they're not very happy working yeah. out like there's they just look <laughs> like they're dying those won't do very well either because right. it's relatable like if you're on if it's an image of someone on a treadmill or the stairs like hanging down on the side like right. that's not going to do well either because you see that and you think oh cardio i hate cardio but right if you see someone on the stairs mm -hmm. smiling or at least enjoying their their time true it's going to make cardio days. Better. Yeah, you know what's interesting is we've tested a bunch of images where people were um, posing and flexing, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Those don't do well. They, they don't. Why do you think that is? Why why is it that images of people what, they're always like, oh look at me, right? Yeah, why, it's why doesn't exactly that? that? It's a yeah. look at me, look at me kind of feeling. Which yes, people watching, <clears throat> but it's too much of the look at me. Right. It yeah. takes away from the image of the gym class that they're posting about or. 
mm -hmm. the equipment they're using, it takes away from that image. Yeah, and I think it's intimidating too. Yes. So if you have somebody that hasn't been to the gym in a while and they're watching a bunch of people, both male and female <laughs> flexing it doesn't look good. after a workout, it's like, mm, do I really want to be a part of that yeah. where everybody's like... Um, Fancy, for lack of a better word, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fancy like Applebee's, yeah. I don't know you heard that new song. But, um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, th I think that it's important to be relatable yes. Um, yes. and likable in the images. So to tell the right brand story, you can really, you can really go wrong uh, in that way. So, all right, so what are some... Um, the third thing that you want to think about when it comes to images, it, it induces a feeling, right? Mm -hmm. um, your marketing should provoke a feeling of some sort. Uh, we're not big on pain marketing or negative marketing where we're trying to make people feel pain or shame or no. anything like that. We want to have positive brand connotations. Um, so what feelings should there be when someone sees your ad in the image? Fun, excitement, happy, mm -hmm. think those kind of feelings. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And what? we do that through the ad copy. We add emojis to make it more personable. Right. So, for example, like the Zumba class, you know, the, the dancing, yes, the, the dancing, dancing girl lady. emoji. Yeah. We add that a lot. We add the smiley yep. emojis. Mm -hmm. We add stars. It just makes it look very natural. Right. Per yeah. se. Yeah, it does. Um, emojis do help a lot yeah. in the ad copy, and that's, that's really critical. So, um, Let's talk about um, relevance real quick. So mm -hmm. we are, you know, Leadline, we, you work with and we work with mm -hmm. um, gyms all over the country, yeah. um, even outside of the country like Canada and things like that. Um, and what's interesting is every market is so different, especially the last couple of years with yeah. what's happened with COVID and mm -hmm. all of that. Um, and so we found that um, some images with uh, masks early on worked Wow. really well mm -hmm. and then others. some totally tanked yeah right and it depended on the market you were mm -hmm. in and what stage we were in as a country mm -hmm. people were over it they're not over it so um relevance talk to me a little bit about relevance and how important it is to be relevant with what's going on in the marketplace at large and, and kind of walking into the conversation in people's heads at that time uh just how you mentioned the, the mask as an example mm -hmm. when we were creating these ads at the time we didn't know how people were going to react to them and sometimes in the comments people were discouraged by mm -hmm. the not mask so we were appealing to the the audience really and added the mask but then in some locations it didn't work well so it's just about really understanding your location understanding the, the demographics understanding what works and what, right. what doesn't really work yeah um but it's also important to update pictures and images because Ugh. You don't, don't want, get me yeah. started. Man, don't get me started. You okay, don't yeah. want to showcase your gym with old images of old, <coughs> whether it's the equipment or mm -hmm. the classes itself. Like the gyms yeah. are always updating, so you should update your pictures as, yep. as well. Especially oh, if man. like you did some repainting or renovations, add those. Like you, we, people want to see those images of right. what the new gyms look like. Or if you added new classes, like showcase those classes. You have new classes on your schedule. Let's see some of those those classes that you're showcasing and so just up to date yeah images. absolutely you know one thing i talked about in a video a long time ago that um, we talked about here in the office a lot is that um, every business should have some sort of quote unquote marketing coordinator whether it's a front desk person that spends one to two hours a week mm -hmm. extra for that position and goes around and captures new images yeah. new video and just keeps media current and fresh and up to date because let's talk about my biggest pet peeve of all time, stock images. Mm. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Mm. Talk to me about stock images. Stock What's images up with that? Stock images don't work because it's portraying almost something fake. Yeah, like, it's, it doesn't work. The, the images, they just don't, they don't work. You, you want it to be as natural as possible. Mm -hmm. Stock images, it's too made up. And yeah. people realize that and they don't, they don't engage with it, they don't click on it because they see, oh, I can never look like this or I can never feel like that. And that's not what we want them yeah, to Yeah, stock like. images are Just, awful. Yeah, they don't do well. <laughs> Even stock looking images. Once in a while, we'll be surprised yeah. when we'll throw another test in there to throw a semi-stock image mm -hmm. in there. But we don't do it often. We do it just to test and see where the market's at. And uh, it's just, it's no bueno, yeah. right? <laughs> no. So, um, 
Yeah, that's really important. So another thing with stock images is branded branded content mm -hmm. and graphics. So I'm uh, there's two thoughts on this. And for those of you that don't understand what we're talking about, we're talking about like images that have like banners on them and a lot yeah. of text and the the company logo yep. and it just it looks like an ad. <laughs> Let me tell you what people are not getting on Facebook to go do, right? What are they not getting on? Hey, I'm going to get my phone out and I'm going to go on Facebook because yep. I can't wait to see ads. <laughs> I am hoping to see about 25 so ads excited. right now. And that's what I, I can't wait. To, is that the, no, no, that's not the case, right? So here's the issue is that branded content doesn't work as well because it doesn't fit in organically mm -hmm. with the news feed, right? No. So it stands out as an ad. Yeah, it looks like an ad. So the, the real trick here is to hide or disguise that it's an ad mm -hmm. and to look more organic. I mean, yeah, it's going to look like an ad. It's going to say sponsored. Um, it may have a button, yeah. you know, but still, if the image is like super stock, it's just people are going to scroll right past it. And right? we want them to stop the scroll. So right. we don't want that. Exactly. There are exceptions to every rule, but uh, as a general rule of thumb. So um, what's your favorite emoji, by the way? Just I in general, not, not for ads, just in general. I love the upside down. It's like the smiley face, but like it's upside down. It's upside down, like ah. I love it because it's like smiling, but it's like it's fine. Everything's fine when really like nothing's fine because it's like upside down. And yeah. I don't know. Personally, that's my favorite emoji. Yeah, that's so funny. You know, I, for those of you that know me in my inner circles, you know I'm obsessed with like the water and boating. I, boating, like mm -hmm. if I'm not on the boat over the weekend, I'm going crazy, right? Yeah. And so um, I accidentally send the boat emoji out um, <laughs> by accident because it's my first emoji and I'll be like, thumbs up, no, it's a boat. That, that's funny. <laughs> so that emoji just ends up everywhere. That is and funny. And people are like, what is this supposed to mean? Um, so yeah. yeah, like boat emojis, uh, hands down, they work for everything. I mean, if you don't know what emoji to send, send the boat emoji. It works. Um, but yeah, emojis are important. And then also um, calls to action. Mm -hmm. So what is a call to action? It gets someone to partake in what you want them to do. So mm -hmm. on the ad, learn more, click more, yeah. click the link below. Those are all call to actions because we want them. It's telling them what to do. What to do. It's mm -hmm. the next logical step. step. Yes. It's the next baby step, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've we found um, over time is that it's you. It's better to take baby steps than to take monster yes. steps, right? If you're running ads to cold traffic, mm -hmm. which is people that are not warm or super familiar with your brand, even though every health club owner thinks that everyone in their area is super familiar <laughs> with their brand, trust me, they're not. It's not as popular as you think. You'd be surprised. Um, one of the things is they're, they're calling them to join now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's like asking for a kiss on the first date before you even sit down for dinner. Nope. It's like really awkward, nope, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> so it should be the next Baby step. Baby step, right? Yes. The next logical step, which what is the next baby step? To click the link and do what? To claim your voucher. Claim a voucher or opt in or, or, or learn in, more. Mm -hmm, learn more, opt in, claim your voucher mm -hmm. to eventually end up walking in to the gym. That's the goal. But baby steps, we got to do that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Baby steps. You're, you're, we're going to finesse through the sales process mm -hmm. in a very organic and natural way to where we're not calling them, hey, join now, click the link online, yeah. sign up for a membership to a gym you've never even seen or been to. No. For cold traffic, that makes no sense. If it's retargeting ads, maybe, but not really. So keep in mind that um, call to action is really important. Mm -hmm. And what's the call to action that tends to work the best um, as far as buttons go? Because we, we have to run buttons on conversion-based ads. So what button do we typically Friend. Claim my voucher. No, which on button? The landing page. Yeah, learn more. I'm talking about the ads. Oh, click, um, click the link. Click. Well, we always were to like click, claim my voucher. No, I'm talking about the button. Oh, learn more. Oh learn my more. God. There it is. What are we doing? Learn more. <laughs> we want them to learn more about the club, the offer. Right. Learn more. <laughs> yeah, learn more is is typically the call to action that works better than than most. Um, so yeah, so we've talked about you know keeping media fresh, um, but we haven't talked about um, testing. Mm -hmm. So um, for those that are not aware, what is a split test? Like it's called A/B testing or split testing. What is split testing? You're testing how many variables at one time. Uh, you just one. You usually test images, so two different images, or four or three. It depends on their budget, but you test images, and then when you find 
a winner of what the, what image works best, then you could test ad copy and things mm -hmm. like that. But we usually just test one at a time. Right. But the point of split testing is to see what the Facebook algorithm really is, is playing into right. and what the uh, audience are engaging with. If yeah. they like the multi-pictures, do they like the single club image? What do they like? So we split test mm -hmm. to see which one runs best. Yeah, and absolutely. Gives us the best conversions and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And there's a couple ways to do that. Um, for years, we've done manual split testing okay. where we'll have a bunch of different ad sets laid out and we'll manually split test. Um, sometimes you can let Facebook decide by putting multiple images in one ad mm -hmm. set. And then you can also run dynamic ads, which Facebook will decide for you and serve up different images and different ad copy and mix the combinations thereof to an audience to show them um, and then see which one ends up working out the best. So yeah. what's interesting is we a lot of times can beat the algorithm mm -hmm. uh, by doing things manually sometimes. So yeah. we'll do a mixture of both, but a lot of times we can beat the algorithm um, with some inside secret sauce that we got. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, it's important to test, right? Because you don't know. You, you think an image will do well. Mm -hmm. you, you'll have a sneaky suspicion that this image is going to yeah. kill it, and it won't, and it'll be the one that surprises you and the most. And even the, the market's always changing so what mm -hmm. what might work today might not work tomorrow and the same thing of how we spoke about earlier like it might work in one location but it might not work in the other location so it's right. really important that we test as often as possible right every location every image every copy just test 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 test, test. test. that's that's test. my answer for everything what do we, what do, we test. do test 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 it we out test everything yes we speed test, hyper test. Um, one more thing we need to touch on is video. Mm -hmm. Video versus images. So video is good for branding and awareness yeah. and lowering your cost to reach more people. But as far as conversion goes, does image or video convert higher? Images, definitely images. Okay. Yeah, images does, do convert higher, right? Yes, absolutely. Why do you think that is? Because people are clicking on the image. They, they want to zoom in see if it's their friend. In the right. image, like, oh, do, do I know that person? Right. Which brings your engagement clicks high and cost per click right. high, things like that. So yeah, yeah. images definitely it brings do it down. Well. Brings it down. Sorry. Yeah, not yes. high. Brings it yeah, down. We're, we're all about bringing your cost down, not high. So yeah, it does. Um, especially if you have groups of people and you mm -hmm. get the, the what we call the curiosity click, mm -hmm. right? And they zoom in. So, um, But videos are just as important, like you said. And it's mm -hmm. we've learned that it's good to do both. Video sometimes, then images back and forth, but images are the ones that convert. Yeah, absolutely. And videos can work really well too if it's done in a sequence or mm -hmm, a series mm -hmm. and you have people in them and it's interesting. Yeah. If it looks like a commercial, uh, for some brands maybe, but most of the time not. Mm -hmm. um, more organic type videos yes. will work better uh, for sure. So um, so there you have it. I mean, you, you want to really think about when you're running ads, you want to stop the scroll Stop the scroll with the image. You want to tell the right story at a glance because a picture's worth a thousand words. It's so important. You want to introduce feelings like excitement and fun and yeah. happiness and, and create that buzz. Um, it's important to have the right types of images. We talked about that, you mm -hmm. know, stock versus organic, graphics and branded image versus organic and how important that is. Um, being relevant, keeping your stuff current and yep. fresh and up to date, um, and then using emojis in your ad copy, and then call to action being um, strategically using like learn more, soft mm -hmm. call to action, and baby step them through organically through that process into a membership sale. And so, uh, Congratulations to you, by Thank the way. Uh, we've got one account just we celebrated the other day that's getting $1 leads and has a 76% booking rate. Yeah. For Very appointments exciting. Very and exciting. people are signing up like crazy. The business called us and is like, "Hey, we're overwhelmed. Can we shut it down?" You're and like, we no, scream like, "No, no, no that, please. <laughs> you are not shutting it down." <laughs> I know you're overwhelmed. Uh, and we helped them through that process, and now they're doing great and uh, signing up tons of people. And we, you had a lot more wins this week that we celebrated yes. under five dollar yep. leads that were just crushing it with over 63, 65, 66 percent book rates. So way to go! Thank you. Thank you, you are. So Rockstar, you're doing good. And thank you for being one of the chosen ones and being courageous to come on camera and not be afraid thank to go you, on the thank podcast. You, thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. So 
Um, if you liked this episode, definitely share it. Um, think about subscribing. Remember, the more that you know, the more you grow. So like, share, and subscribe to the next level of your fitness business. You can find the podcast hosted at leadlinemarketing.com slash podcast. And then also on YouTube and syndicated on all the major platforms like Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. So thank you again for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.